In this demonstration, I am going to show the use of the RF power meter to measure the frequency response of a 9 meg crystal filter. This is a KVG crystal filter mounted on a circuit board for a transceiver project. It contains an input buffer amplifier and an emitter follower. I want to know what the frequency response of that crystal filter is. So I've set up a small oscillator over here, which is a Colpitts oscillator using the 9 meg crystal designed for that particular filter. The crystal oscillator has a variable capacitor and an inductor added so that I can adjust the frequency by plus or minus around 3 or 4 kilohertz. This will allow me to slowly sweep through the passband of the crystal filter and measure the response using the RFPM1 power meter as you see over here. This is a quick sketch of the VXO I'm using to sweep the passband of the filter. A 9 meg crystal, a variable capacitor, just a polyvericon and a 33 microhenry inductor. A 2N2222 transistor in a simple Colpitts oscillator circuit. The output of the oscillator has been set so that I am getting 0 dBm out of the crystal filter at the moment and the frequency is 9 megahertz, 9.0000. There's a view of the frequency counter I'm using to verify the frequency as I adjust it on the VXO. I can also observe the sine wave out of the crystal filter on the oscilloscope as you can see here. So here, so here is the output at 9 megahertz. I will now adjust the VXO for a 6 dB drop. As you can see, I adjust the tuning capacitor. It's reasonably flat across the top. It varies by a, a, a dB or so, half a dB or so. And now we're coming down the slope and we will stop at 6 dB. Around 6 dB, which is there. And measure the frequency. We'll just uh, swing up to the frequency counter and we see it's 8.99870. In other words, 1.3 kilohertz below the frequency of 9 megahertz or below the center. I've now adjusted the oscillator so that the output of the filter is 6 dB down on the upper part on the upper side band part of the 9 meg crystal filter. I've left it on the uh, frequency counter and you can see the oscillator has moved up by 1.35 kilohertz. If I just move down to the power meter you'll see the reading on the power meter for that setting. It's minus 5.8 dB. So we've now found the 6 dB points. Uh, the minus 20 dB point is 9.0015 megahertz. Uh, minus 40 is around 9.0018 megahertz. Uh, minus 50 is 9.0023 megahertz. And, and just a little bit higher in frequency I get minus 58 and that's as far as the VXO will tune. I've had to uh, shield the bottom of the oscillator. The RF probe is very sensitive and this oscillator really needs to be in a uh, metal box. So I have had to put some uh, L-foil underneath and I've also had to be careful with the probes that the probes don't radiate a signal back into the counter, back into the power meter and bypass the crystal filter. This filter is capable of around 80 to 90 dB attenuation but not in this particular setup. There's just too much stray coupling from the oscillator through to the RF power meter. Once it's in a transceiver and all sealed up and shielded, it, it should be a lot better. On the lower sideband part of the filter, minus 20 dBm is 8.9985 MHz. Minus 40 dBm is 8.9982 MHz. Minus uh, 50 is 8.9979 MHz. Minus 60 is 8.9977 megahertz. And that's as low as I can go with this particular setup without uh, full shielding. So, so if you don't happen to have a spectrum analyzer but wish to build and design a crystal filter, you can use this sensitive RF power meter as a, as a reasonably good test instrument for, de, for building the filter and testing it. Its accuracy is good enough for most amateur applications and it's a lot cheaper than a, uh, a good spectrum analyzer. This is a quick graph paper plot I did of the measurements I took. 
approximately 2.6 kc bandwidth at the 6 dB points and 4.1 kcs at the minus uh, 50 dB points. The advantage of the power meter is that the reading is in dBs and is logarithmic. So you don't have to uh, convert from linear to log if you were using, for example, a voltmeter, an RF voltmeter. During the process of checking the frequency response of this KVG 9 meg filter, I noticed some unusual readings with the power meter. The KVG filter is mounted on a circuit board with a amplifier at the input, a buffer amplifier with a gain of about 3 and an emitter follower at the output. The transistors are MPSH10s which are VHF UHF transistors. So I decided to have a closer look using the two-tone probe and the RF power meter. Now the module at the moment has no input signal and there's nothing connected to the output. I just have power applied to the two RF transistors and I noticed that the power meter has a significant reading around the emitter follower area. If I probe around the buffer amp it's not so bad but around the emitter follower we see quite a significant signal which tells me that the emitter follower is, is, is taking off, it's oscillating at some frequency. It wasn't observable on the oscilloscope but it's somewhere in the upper VHF or even UHF region. And hence the reason why we're getting some strange readings on the power meter. This is an example of where this little probe is quite useful in debugging circuits. Normally you wouldn't see uh, this on a crow or any low frequency instrument. But the frequency response of the power meter being 500 megs is able to pick up these sort of problems. Here is a closer look at the circuit board with the two RF amplifier stages and the quartz filter. This is the back of the board. Nothing too unusual, yet this circuit board sh shows UHF oscillations around the emitter follower as just demonstrated. The, instabil the instability problem was solved by replacing the two MPSH10 transistors with lower gain, gain bandwidth product devices 2N3904s. Here you can see the probe around the emitter follower and also the buffer amp and there's no sign of oscillation. The transistors that were causing the oscillation were replaced prior to the measurements that I took on the filter. 